Hey guys, welcome to my channel! In this video we're gonna be traveling Croatia for seven days. We're gonna explore some of the best cities and beaches in Croatia. Obviously seven days is absolutely not enough to see everything of this beautiful country because there's so many islands. Uh, you can do a lot of island hopping and there are all lots of places, a lot of beautiful villages that are located off the coast. But in this video we're gonna focus on coastal locations. So we're mainly gonna visit the cities of Dubrovnik, Makarska, um, Split, Zadar um, and Pula. We're starting our trip in Dubrovnik and we're finishing the trip in Zagreb. We managed to get an interesting car rental where you can drop it off at the different locations so that was definitely convenient and we were not forced <laughs> to drive all the way back to Dubrovnik. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let's get started! It takes about half an hour to drive from Dubrovnik airport to the old town of Dubrovnik and the road is really, really nice, really picturesque, has a lot of beautiful towns on the way. It's especially beautiful during the sunset. For our one night in Dubrovnik, we picked Hotel Adria, which is a really nice four-star hotel located outside of the old town, um, about 45 minutes walking um, or <laughs> around six minutes driving. Although I wouldn't recommend you to drive to Dubrovnik old town, just because parking is extremely expensive. Actually, we wanted to stay in the old town, but there are maybe one or two hotels which have parking um, that are located walking distance from the old town. And these hotels were quite expensive, I would say. They were around £400 per night, which was definitely outside of our budget. Here are the actual parking prices for Dubrovnik Old Town and in summer it costs over £5 an hour. So Dubrovnik, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. It's absolutely stunning and I definitely recommend um, you to visit it during the daylight. However, unfortunately, in this video I'm only going to show you Dubrovnik at night or better to say in the evening just because we've been to Dubrovnik before, we've seen it all and our trip, this trip, was actually quite short so we just decided to spend one evening in Dubrovnik. One of the best things to do in the city is actually visiting the city walls because the views from the city walls are stunning and you can do it um, during the day, of course. It's a paid attraction, so you do need to pay to visit them, but it's definitely worth it. Also, if you're a fan of different tours, I recommend you taking one of the Brovnik walking tours or a themed tour, for example, a Game of Thrones walking tour where they show you all the filming locations for the King's Landing and Game of Thrones. Um, for those of you who don't know, Game of Thrones is basically one of the most popular TV series ever. If you're lucky to visit Dubrovnik in summer, um, also unlucky at the same time because obviously in summer it's extremely crowded, but in summer there are concerts pretty much every single day, uh, so you can buy a ticket and have a very comfy spot, or you can stand and listen to the music for free. My favorite activity in Dubrovnik, however, is to be fair, just walking around the city and discovering some nice small streets, beautiful buildings, taking photos and really just enjoying the city. Keep in mind that Dubrovnik is the most expensive city in Croatia, so you might need to kind of extend your budget for Dubrovnik only. Also, if you want to visit a nice restaurant, I recommend booking it at least one week in advance. On our second day in Croatia, we drove to a nice breakfast spot to have breakfast. And while driving there, we actually discovered this beautiful viewpoint. It's not really a viewpoint, it's just a stop on the highway, the same highway that leads um, to Dubrovnik airport. But yeah, there is a possibility to stop there for maybe a minute or so to jump out of the car and see this beautiful panorama of the old town. So after seeing Dubrovnik from above, we drove, we started driving to Split. So normally the drive to Split takes about four and a half hours, but during the busy months in summer, it might take 
five or even six hours and the drive um, the road um, to Split actually goes through another country through Bosnia and Herzegovina so yes you actually need to go through a proper passport control you don't need to leave a car or anything just show your passport and get a stamp if you need one and it's it's fairly quick but uh, sometimes they take time checking cars if your rental agreement permits, because our didn't, you can actually drive a little bit in Bosnia and Herzegovina and go to a beautiful town called Mostar. Mostar is located just a short drive from basically that bit of Bosnia, which we will be crossing anyway. And it's famous because of its beautiful bridge. Sometimes you can even see people jumping um, into the water from that bridge. It has a lot of Turkish influence and a lot of nice cafes where you could have a coffee, um, etc., etc. So yeah, it's a really nice place to visit. Um, we didn't go there at this time, but we went back in 2016 and really, really loved it. It took us around four hours in total because of traffic to reach a town called Makarska, a really, really beautiful town located in Makarska Riviera, a nice beach destination, quite a popular one, actually. Um, and as it turned out, it was really, really crowded. It was probably one of the most crowded beaches I have ever seen. But regardless of that, the town is nice and it's a great stop on the way to Split, especially if you want to go for a quick swim. It took us an hour, another hour or probably an hour and a half to reach a split from Makarska. The road is probably the most beautiful road we've seen in Croatia. Um, really, really nice one, especially if you don't uh, take the toll road. Once we reached split, we were so grateful that we booked a hotel with a parking because finding a parking spot was nearly impossible. And our hotel was called Hotel Lux. It's one of the best rated hotels in Split. And that's for a reason, because the staff was so, so friendly. We also got upgraded. Um, so we got a room with a sea view. And honestly, everything at this hotel was wonderful. So I definitely recommend it. It's also just steps away from the old town. We were able to reach uh, the old town in about five minutes, maybe even less. We we stayed in Split for two nights. Uh, the reason we stayed there for so long uh, during our quite short trip in Croatia is because we wanted to visit one of the islands uh, near Split, uh, which is called Hvar. Hvar is one of the most popular islands in Croatia. But unfortunately, we were really unlucky with the weather. So um, we decided not to go there on a day when it was just 19 degrees and quite rainy. But let's talk about Split instead. So Split is a really beautiful town. So the old town of Split is quite compact, um, but you can see clearly see the Italian influence. Yet Split is the second largest city in Croatia. So there are plenty of things to do outside of the old town, including beaches. Um, I also like Split because um, it's one of the few cities which has really, really nice beaches walking distance to the old town. So the first beach was located just steps away from the old town and from our hotel. Uh, but there are way better beaches um, which are located just about maybe 30, 40, 35 minutes walking um, to the left um, from the old town. Um, one of the beaches is a beach that belongs to the hotel called Radisson Blue. And it's uh, really, really clean, really beautiful. There are also beach clubs where you can rent beds. Um, for example, Taboo Beach Club. They are quite pricey, especially compared to Greece, where we were before that. Um, so you need to pay something like, um, I don't know, 50 or 60 pounds for two beds for the entire day. Um, but if you're only spending one day on the beach in Split, I would say it's probably worth it. On our fourth day in Croatia, we went to Krka National Park. That's the place we went to instead of Hvar because of bad weather. Beautiful national park famous for its waterfalls, um, eco trails and lakes. So the entrance costs around 20 um, Croatian kuna per person. So it ended up being around 44 quid for both of us. It's quite pricey, but that's all right because this place is gorgeous. And don't forget to bring comfy shoes with you because you're gonna go a lot off trail.
which sounds exciting to be fair because it's quite a change compared to our regular sightseeing slash beach days. Unless of course you take a coach and avoid most of uh, walking or the hardest part of walking at least. Kurka National Park is located just about an hour and a half driving from Split and it was also around one hour and a half driving from our next destination, Zadar. It's probably most famous because of its uh, beautiful waterfall, which I will show you a bit later. It was also possible to swim there um, until the end of last year. So basically since the beginning of this year, it's not allowed to swim here anymore. I would say it's stunning and I actually enjoyed it way more than Plitvitz Lakes, um, despite the Plitvitz Lakes being probably the gem and <laughs> the most famous destination of Croatia. Uh, the only downside of Kurka for me was the fact that it was absolutely crowded. In some places it was almost like a traffic jam made of people and it also turned out to be rather small. So if you just walk the kind of designated walk on the map, you can cover everything in about two and a half or three hours, maybe. And if you want to take a boat tour, you need to pay extra. Uh, the boat tour only happens twice a day. Um, so you need to make sure to know the times in advance if you want to take it. There are places to eat inside the park. There is a cafe. It's a bit it's a bit pricey for what it is, and the food is quite simple, but um, it's definitely filling. Also, if you want to use a toilet at some point, make sure to bring coins uh, because the toilets are paid, and you won't be able to visit it if you don't have the one, two, or five kuna coins. It was time for us to go back and the queue to get a shuttle back was quite large so we had to climb all the way back which was a bit tiring. Our next destination was Zadar, another touristic city in Croatia. So Zadar itself isn't big, however I think its old town is quite large for the size of Zadar and um, it looked like a maze to us because we were not able to find directions whatsoever. There were a lot of tiny streets, they were kind of uh, not kind of crossing each other, so once you take a street you might end up in the wrong location because there is no way to turn right, you need to go all the way back. But anyway, uh, it had a lot of nice streets, it was pretty much the first um, town we've seen which was mo mainly targeted at locals rather than tourists. Um, there weren't that many souvenir shops, there were mostly kind of proper shops that the locals would use. Also had a lot of uh, residential buildings within the old town. Um, if I look back, I would say I would probably skip um, Zadar. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure why I didn't fall in love with this city that much um, and why I didn't like it as much as I liked um, pretty much all the other destinations on this trip. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really, really hard to, for me to say because the town is actually really beautiful. Our fifth day in Croatia was full of driving, so driving from Zadar to Pula takes about five and a half hours, so we arrived exhausted. However, we were really, really happy to be in Pula, uh, because obviously Pula is one of the most um, amazing cities in Croatia and has one of the most iconic landmarks, which is Arena of Pula, which is pretty much um, a Roman Colosseum. Only the, only the condition of arena in Pula is a bit better than the condition of Colosseum. It's actually a place, a venue, where a lot of concerts take place. So I think as far as I know, the concert of Elton John was there at some point. You need to pay to go inside. However, um, you don't really need to pay to see it from the outside. And from the outside, you are pretty much able to see everything. So yeah, if you're on a budget, save your money. In Pula we stayed at the Hotel Scaletta, which was really, really old. I think last time it was refurbished um, was probably 1970s <laughs> or maybe even earlier. But uh, it was the only hotel which was decently rated, had um, not, well, it wasn't that expensive and had a parking spot and was located just maybe three minutes away from the Pula Arena, which was really, really close 
to the city center. Uh, I really enjoyed Pula. It was really crowded and touristic um, because obviously it's one of the most famous and popular cities of Istria. Istria is a region of Croatia which is famous um, because of its um, Italian influence. Um, I think there are still a lot of people who speak two languages, so they speak Italian and Croatian. And Pula also has an airport, so it's quite easy to get there. I'm not sure about the beaches. We didn't have an opportunity to explore the beaches uh, in Pula. I'm pretty sure the city itself doesn't have any beaches. So you need to take a bus or take a car and go to a town nearby which might have a beach. But yeah, Pula is, uh, is a wonderful destination. I think the city itself is really, really pretty. There are plenty of places to eat. Um, there are plenty of quirky and nice shops. And uh, what I especially liked um, is the fact that um, the old town uh, has one pretty much street that um, makes a circle and you can see most of Pula just by walking one street. And there are also really nice classical music concerts at the end of the day. So if you're lucky to get a spot, you can get a glass of wine and enjoy the music. On the day six, we woke up early and drove for about 40 minutes to Rovin from Pula. Rovin is honestly the gem of Istria. Rovin is probably the most impressive city in that region of Croatia and it's definitely my favorite. It's so colorful, it reminded me of Italy. It had a lot of gelaterias, a lot of beautiful buildings, um, quirky shops, um, plenty of restaurants, plenty of nice streets to walk around and honestly just enjoy the city. I really don't have anything else to say apart from guys just go visit Robin because it's definitely worth it. So I'll show you the selection of clips from this beautiful city. In Istria, we stayed close to Umag at a hotel called Milia Coral, which wasn't great, so I wouldn't recommend it. So I would recommend you staying somewhere close to Rovin, but unfortunately, um, we booked just a week in advance and there were no hotels available. So if you're booking earlier, you might be much luckier than we were. So if you still have time, there are plenty of other beautiful towns to explore nearby. One of them being Porridge. We went there and spent about a um, couple of hours walking around and exploring what the city has to offer. Porridge was in a way similar to all the other cities we've seen, but it also had um, slightly kind of more Byzantine vibes. <laughs> it looked a bit more Greek than other places. At least to us, it looked like this. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. 
Um, Polish has a really nice promenade, has a lot of uh, nice um, hotels located nearby, so it's a good place to stay as well. We also went to Novigrad, uh, or Sita Nova, how it's called in Italian. It was really small, <laughs> but it was probably the most colorful town, and I particularly enjoyed the street with umbrellas. If you're planning to swim in Croatia, it's actually worth mentioning that um, the best beaches are located probably close to Dubrovnik area or Makarska or Split. Um, most of the beaches in Istria are either pebbled uh, beaches like this one or there are like massive concrete slabs with stairs leading directly to the sea. So it's not a traditional white sandy beach uh, that you might be used to if you often travel to Spain or Italy to swim. There are sandy beaches in Croatia but they're just really rare and actually a lot of people say that the most beautiful beaches are located on the islands like uh, Wall for example on the Brach island. And the last town we visited in Istria was Umag. Um, it's not particularly impressive, it's just a quiet touristic place. There are a couple of restaurants but I haven't found anything impressive so feel free to skip it unless you obviously have months and months in Croatia and you want to visit every single place. On our last day in Croatia we woke up really early and headed to a place called Motovun. We found it in the lists of the most beautiful villages in Croatia which explains why it was so busy. It was really, really f hard to find a parking spot, despite the fact that there was a huge parking um, just at the entrance to the town. So basically, you need to leave your car and then you need to climb for about, well, hike for about 10 minutes. Um, also, a lot of restaurants were fully booked. You actually need to call and book them in advance if you want to have lunch there. We didn't, but it was um, interesting to find out that you have to do it. But nonetheless, it's totally worth visiting. It's really, really beautiful. Our next stop was probably the most famous um, attraction in the entire Croatia, the Plitvitz Lakes. Uh, the Plitvitz Lakes um, is a national park, just like Kurka National Park, um, yet it's much, much bigger and there are plenty of different routes you can do. There is a short route, there is a medium route and there is like a really really long one where you need probably 10 hours to complete it. Uh, we opted in for uh, a short one just because we didn't have that much time. I forgot to mention that the tickets were just over 50 pounds for both of us, so yeah they were quite expensive. In total we spent a few hours in the park. Um, I think we probably would be able to spend less time if there were less people because keep in mind that in summer uh, Plitvitz Lakes gets really really crowded so the queues are essential. So this is an example of a queue um, to take a small boat that um, brings you to the other side of the trail. Um, this is absolutely mandatory for everyone to do unless you're hiking everything by foot, uh, the journey that takes over 10 hours, the one I mentioned previously. So obviously the guide times of kind of the park visit take into account waiting time for the boat and for the coach. Yes, you also need to take a coach um, on the way back. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, but if you're taking the shortest route, route A, or the second shortest, route B, you will be able to visit the park in about one and a half, or maybe from one and a half to three hours. And finally, our last destination of this trip is Zagreb, the capital of Croatia. We actually spent a bit longer in Zagreb because we were working, working remotely for the next three days. But you can probably see the city in one and a half days because it's not so big and there are not that many things to do apart from some really unique and interesting museums like a museum of broken relationships. But probably the best thing to do in Zagreb is going to Gornigrad or the upper town. You can either take the stairs that go there, uh, also from the stairs you'll see views like this one, really really nice panoramic views, especially beautiful during the sunset, or you can take a funicular, but it works only during the specific hours. So the upper town actually reminded me a little bit of Prague, the capital of Czech Republic, especially this church I've shown you just right now. It's also really, really quiet. There are pretty much no restaurants there at all, uh, except for maybe a couple. 
Um, it's also quite small and compact. However, the part next to it is full of restaurants. When I say full, it's literally restaurants around every corner. Actually, there are so many options uh, to choose from when it comes to eating in Zagreb. But also, again, some of the most popular places, especially Croatian restaurants, uh, need to be booked in advance. Finally, there is this unique tunnel. Um, it's not an attraction, you don't need to pay to visit it at all. It's just a tunnel that connects different parts of the city. It's located in the heart of the city, it literally exits to the main square. But it's, it's unique and it's definitely worth visiting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of a seven day um, road trip itinerary around Croatia. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, follow my channel if you're not following already and see you guys in the next video.